A two-dimensional blog is hardly the place to sound off about that three-dimensional form, architecture. Except that even a fourth, or at least a spiritual dimension, is evoked as part of the RA's enticements to their latest exhibition. Space for the architect does not exist, so we design the limits that give the impression of space. This declaration greeted me from a war in the Royal Academy at the members' private view of sensing spaces, architecture reimagined. The forecourt of the Royal Academy is reimagined these days with every exhibition. So the bar was set high, and it was something of an anticlimax for me to see nothing more radical as far as new limits, or indeed new extensions to the well-loved space, than these yellow objects. Architecture is all round us, of course. The great architect impresses us on the vast scale we can sense, even on a walk home in a suburban dusk tracery, and an awesome sense of space beyond. But even this humble end of terrace detail is reimagined here. As for close-up detail, nature even goes in for gargoyles. I saw this beast when walking the dog only yesterday. Such work as surely must have inspired the master stonemasons of our great cathedrals. A wet local street can be a modest aesthetic experience worthy of study, though my soft, shaky edges stretch architecture beyond its limits, its hard limits, to accommodate my own artistic limitations. These are new portraits of one of my NW6 local streets, but on rain-soaked Lehman Street in Whitechapel, E1, I was astonished to see the brother of our Hampstead Heath beast, until it transformed itself into a gentleman who seemed to be gesturing to say, no photography, please. Transformation scenes are no strangers to Lehman Street. For 50 years until the late 1880s, there was a theatre quite near here. But a search for the fourth dimension can be pursued at a model shop underneath the railway arches the haunt of art students and stage designers today. At the Royal Academy, I did get a close-up look at some of the angelic caryatid maidens near the roof in one gallery as I climbed up the wooden walkways to the very cornice but I found the pillars that housed the spiral staircase to carry one down again did not enhance the room for me, though the ambience engaged one young connoisseur. Have I lost my gift for childlike delight? Or have I seen so much, have we all, that my palate is jaded? I was neither surprised nor delighted. Not since Anish Kapoor filled these venerable halls with red candle wax and one room with excretions, giant droppings of clay, preordained forms, as he dubbed them, no less. Have I felt so strongly that artists, and now architects, are at the end of some terrible tether that causes them to struggle thus?
to engage us. If I had been given the forecourt to reimagine, I might have designed a maze that one could elect to walk round the outside of or enter to gain access to the exhibition. I am yet to decide what material the maze would be hedged by. After I got the idea, I bumped into this plastic hedge at the British Library. But real privet is not an impossibility and people could orientate themselves by looking up to see the edifices of the quad. Sir Joshua Reynolds is a marvellous centrepiece. Perhaps one could climb up to see him close, up a ladder, and to try to find one's way. As for my gallery, an element of time could be introduced. On one wall, a life-size reproduction of this summer exhibition. On gauze, perhaps. The exhibition already employs gauze. A clever shift of light could illuminate us in our informal wear, seeing ourselves in the huge mirror ensconced behind this illustration. A theatrical device, you understand, taking us from the world of the 18th century to now. The lighting trick would be repeated throughout the day, of course. It wouldn't win me the Turner Prize, but it is more sophisticated than a light going on and off. The opposite wall would have affixed to its blank whiteness a single iPad with, wait for it, one of my iPad paintings. Why are they all walking past it? And while I'm at it, you'll forgive me for experimenting with bent wire. In a city, the atmosphere is all around you and is ever-changing. New things will become old things. Time is a great architect. Alvaro Cesar. <laughs> 